Hey folks, welcome back to Military Forces Unleashed, where we dive deep, pun intended, into the machines and strategies that shape warfare. Today, we're talking about a ship that's been quietly rewriting the rules of naval combat, the Ever Huitfeldt, class frigate. In this episode, we'll explore how Denmark's sleek, modular warship became a game changer in modern maritime strategy. From its origins as a budget-friendly design to its role as a powerhouse of anti-air, anti-surface, and surveillance capabilities, this is one ship that proves brains can outmatch brawn. So grab your coffee or maybe a Danish pastry and let's set sail. Here's the thing, most people think naval warfare is all about big guns and bigger explosions. But what if I told you that one of the deadliest ships in the world doesn't even look like it belongs on the battlefield? The Ivor Huitfeldt isn't just a frigate. It's a floating Swiss army knife designed to do everything from hunting submarines to shooting down missiles, all while costing less than half of what other navies spend on similar vessels. And trust me, when it comes to warships, cheaper usually means not as good. But not this time. To understand the Ever Huitfeldt, we need to rewind a bit to the days when frigates were essentially glorified pirate hunters. Back in the age of sail, these ships were fast, lightly armed, and perfect for chasing down smaller vessels or scouting ahead of the main fleet. Fast forward to World War II, and frigates had evolved into escort ships, protecting convoys from submarine attacks. But here's the kicker. By the late 20th century, frigates started becoming more specialized. Enter the Cold War era, where every navy wanted something versatile enough to handle multiple roles, but cheap enough to build in bulk. Sound familiar? That's exactly what Denmark had in mind when they began designing their next generation frigate. Denmark isn't exactly known for its military might. Sandwiched between Germany and Sweden, it's more famous for Vikings, Lego, and Higa than for naval dominance. But don't let that fool you. When it comes to innovation, the Danes know how to punch above their weight. The story of the Ivor Huitfeldt begins with an ambitious project called the Standard Flex Concept. Basically, the Danish Navy wanted ships that could adapt to different missions without needing a full redesign. Think of it like building a smartphone. You start with a solid base model, then add apps or modules depending on what you need. By the early 2000s, this idea led to the construction of three ships, the Ivor Huitfeldt, Peter Villamos, and Niels Yule. Each was built using components salvaged from decommissioned ships, which kept costs low and made the program a masterclass in recycling. Now, let's talk tech. The Ivor Huitfeldt might not be the largest frigate out there, but holy cow, does it pack a punch. At just over 137 meters long and displacing around 6,600 tons fully loaded, it's roughly the size of a small destroyer. But unlike traditional destroyers, which are often single-purpose platforms, this ship is a jack-of-all-trades. Its primary weapon system is the APAR radar, paired with the SM-2 missile, a deadly combo capable of intercepting supersonic threats up to 150 kilometers away. For surface warfare, it carries Harpoon missiles, which are basically the AK-47s of anti-ship weapons. Simple, reliable, and devastating. Oh, and did I mention it has a helicopter hangar? Because nothing says versatility like being able to launch a chopper for search and rescue ops or dropping torpedoes on enemy subs. And get this, the entire ship runs on a modular mission bay system. Need to hunt mines? Swap out the anti-air gear for mine countermeasure equipment. Want to conduct humanitarian missions? Load up medical supplies and deploy disaster relief teams. It's like having three ships in one minus the hassle of buying three separate hulls. So, has the Ivor Wheatfelt lived up to the hype? Short answer, yes. Long answer, hell yes. Since entering service in 2012, 
these frigates have participated in countless NATO exercises, patrolled Mediterranean waters during crises, and even supported international coalitions against piracy off Somalia, one standout moment came in 2014, when the Peter Willemos joined Operation Ocean Shield. Not only did it demonstrate Denmark's commitment to global security, but it also showcased the ship's ability to operate far from home for extended periods. Critics love to point out that smaller crews mean longer deployments can strain resources, but honestly, try telling that to the sailors who've spent months at sea keeping shipping lanes safe. All right, let's cut through the propaganda and get real. Yes, the Ivor Huitfeldt is impressive, but it's not perfect. On the plus side, its modular design and advanced sensors make it a nightmare for adversaries. However, there are trade-offs. For starters, maintaining such a high-tech vessel requires skilled personnel, which can be hard to come by. Plus, those fancy radars and missile systems? They don't run on wishes. They guzzle electricity like teenagers binge-watching Netflix. Then there's the cost issue. Sure, Denmark saved money by reusing parts from older ships, but operating expenses still add up. Fuel consumption, spare parts, training programs. All of these things eat into budgets faster than you'd expect. Some analysts argue that the Ivor Huitfeldt is too reliant on foreign-made components, particularly American weaponry and Dutch radar systems. Dependency on allies isn't inherently bad, but it does raise questions about sovereignty. On the flip side, critics who call it over-engineered clearly haven't seen the alternatives. Compared to bloated billion-dollar destroyers drowning in complexity, the Ivor Heutfeldt feels refreshingly practical. It proves that sometimes less really is more. At the end of the day, the Ivor Huitfeldt is both a triumph of engineering and a lesson in restraint. It shows us that you don't always need bigger guns or flashier gadgets to dominate the seas. You just need smarter planning and execution. But it also reminds us that no machine is infallible. Even the best designed ships face logistical headaches, financial constraints, and geopolitical challenges. So would I want to serve aboard one? Absolutely. Would I bet my life savings on it never breaking down? Probably not. But hey, that's the beauty of naval warfare. It's unpredictable, chaotic, and endlessly fascinating. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the Ivor Heitfeldt, don't forget to smash that like button and hit subscribe for more content like this. Got thoughts on whether modular designs are the future of naval warfare? Drop them in the comments below. We'd love to hear your take. And if you're feeling generous, share this video with your friends who geek out over warships. After all, knowledge is power, especially when it comes to understanding the tools of war. Thanks for tuning in and supporting Military Forces Unleashed. Your engagement keeps this channel sailing smoothly, pun absolutely intended. Until next time, stay sharp, keep exploring the mysteries of military history, and remember, the seas may change, but the stories behind them remain timeless. See you soon.